Welcome to Altechies. I'm Pankaj Rai and in this second tutorial of Jetpack Compose Zero to Hero Crash Course, I'm going to talk about the composables. So Jetpack Compose is all about composables. Well, if you see about the standard UI toolkit, then we have something called as views. We could have either text views, buttons, card views, and lots of views we have it. Well, those are called views because at the end, eventually they are going to extend views. So here in Jetpack Compose, it is not similar to views. Rather here, everything is declarative. That means rather than focusing on inheritance, it's composition which is used here. So the view term is not an appropriate term for the composables. The composables are those things which are drawn on UI. So for example, if you could see about this text composable, then this text composable is annotated with at the rate composable. Well, this do not require any annotation processor. Rather, it's just one of the way to indicate compiler that this function is not an ordinary function. Rather, this function contain a piece of code that has to be transformed to the UI so whatever code that you write based on that it decides what to draw on ui so for example here we have text now this text is eventually calling the text composable if you'll see this under the hood eventually you'll figure it out that this is individually drawn it's not like in hurting other views and similarly all these composables are drawn individually now as we have talked about composables so the first thing which may come in mind is why do we need to annotate this with at the rate composable say for example I create a composable and I'll say this as a person now this person composable is a composable function because of at the rate composable but if I do not add this at the rate composables then this becomes an ordinary function well the function is a function and it's going to be there in Kotlin that means that even though we have composable as a function our existing function is still remain as it is now for example if I have a function say add two numbers now this function is an ordinary function where the overall objective is to add a number and then eventually just return the number but how do this could be differentiated that this is an ordinary function and this function is going to have a code that has to be transformed to the UI well that work is done using at the rate composable when you annotate any function with at the rate composable you also have to call that function from another composable that means say if I create a function show person details now if I want to call person composable from this function then that is not allowed it's all because this person is a composable and that should be done from another composables so if you want to call this person then that should be within another composable okay now let's see about a few other composables let's start with the text itself text is a composable whatever content that you specify as a text parameter you'll find that written on UI now this text takes few more parameters which is modifier, color, font size, style, weights, family, decoration, alignment all sort of things you could provide directly from the parameter like for example for this text itself let's change the color and uh, let me make this as material theme dot colors dot primary also let's change the font size let me make this as 36 SP then font uh, weight let's make this as extra bold 
even if you want to make it italic then let's change the font style font style to italic so along with this we have so many other parameters too but one thing which you could observe here is that with jetpack composite is quite simple to create application because now you could change the properties right by providing those content as a parameter also if you are in doubt about what composable accepts what kind of parameters then go for the implementation of it you'll see all of them those parameters which do not have any default values those are mandatory parameters like for example text do not have any default value whereas modifier color all these things they have the default value that means from this text composable this text parameter is mandatory i cannot avoid that say for example if i delete this then i'll have an error here it's all because i need to pass the value for the mandatory parameters okay let me undo this and now if i run this you will see hello welcome to jetpack compose crash course where color will be the primary color font size 36 sp weight is extra bold and style as italic and here it is based on whatever parameters that we have specified we see the content exactly based on that okay now let's talk about another composable that is button so let's have a button here now this button have on click parameter here which provide us the lambda 2 now whenever button is clicked this lambda will get triggered every time that means whatever action which you want to specify based on a click you should write that inside on click now let's see the implementation of button if you see the implementation of this then again you'll have lots of parameters which is helpful to change the property of a button out of all these things on click is a mandatory parameter because it do not have a default parameter well how do you recognize a default parameter you can do with the equal to if you have equal to something there then that's having the default value if you do not provide value for that it takes the default value like for example with button here we just have provided on click and we have not done anything with enable so enable will take the default value as true that means this button will always remain enable because we haven't changed the state of it so now this button if i run this then you'll see an empty container kind of view because we do not have a text for the button this button just act as a container on top of this we need to add a text composable so that it will have some sort of text combination of these two forms a button like for example if i do not specify anything then you just see an empty container here well this text composable is like on the button you see the text that's coming from the text composable say so if i write submit then now this button which is occupying the entire width and height will have text as submit and then based on your requirement you could change the width height or size of the button based on the modifier and here it is we have the text submit at the center of the screen clicking on it is also giving us the ripple effect that's because the property of button adds ripple effect to it okay now let's talk about rows and column well see if you have a ui where you want to have one element below the other for example you could think of a linear layout where the orientation is vertical how could you achieve that in jetpack compose so for that we have something called as column now to this column let me specify the size as fill 
max size that means occupy the entire width and height then inside this let's have text I'll say hello how are you and then let's also have one more text I'm good how about you so now when I run this application you will see one text below the other that's all because of the column composable if you see the implementation for this then you will see that we have modified vertical arrangement horizontal arrangement finally the content content based on the column scope and we'll talk about this vertical and horizontal alignment too so here you could see this we have two text one below the other so now let's do one thing we'll change the vertical arrangement and we'll say space between so what it will do is that based on the size of this column it will try to distance these views in such a way that it will have equal spacing between each other. Let's see this one. And then for better understanding, let me also add another text composable. So you could see one text is on top another one at the bottom because you have specified that we want equal space between both of them I'll say hey now you'll see hello how are you on top I'm good how about you at the center and hey at the bottom as it is trying to give equal spacing among these composables okay how about this horizontal alignment so for that we could say that we want this alignment towards what center horizontally end or start for example let me say this as alignment end then what it's going to do is that to its children that means all these three text composables you'll see the alignment for them towards the end of the screen and here you could see that because we specified this as end if we say center horizontally then you'll see all this text coming to the center of the screen as you could see these views are at the center now so that was about the column and then exact same sort of behavior you'll see with the row also but here instead of views aligning in the vertical fashion it will be in the horizontal way let's check it out so again we have row let's make this occupy the entire width and height of the screen and then we'll add this three text let's delete this column now you may see that this three text will come one after another so you could see here we have the first text second text and then third one at the end but they do not have any space so do we have that same kind of alignment also for rows then yes we have vertical and horizontal alignments and arrangements so let's do horizontal arrangement arrangement dot space between now when we say space between we'll have the space among all these three composables also based on the vertical height of this row if we want to align this three text then we could do that using vertical alignment so here you could see this we have this text 
and we have equal spacing among them. Now let's use vertical alignment. For this, let me say bottom. Now when I say bottom, then what it's going to do is that because this row occupies the entire width and height of the screen, so this three text will come at the bottom of the screen. Similarly, center vertically will make it to come at the center of the screen. But here let's see for the bottom. And here you could see that these texts are coming at the bottom. Before I close this tutorial, the one final thing which I want to tell here is the scrollable part. Say for example, here we just have three text. Now, instead of a space between, if we want an equal spacing, then we could add a spacer. Here we could have padding. Say it requires a padding of 12 dp. Then, what happens if I add more text? For example, if I add this two once again, then what will happen here? Well, the obvious case here is that it's going to go beyond this screen. So how could we add a scrolling content here so that in case the content goes beyond the screen, then user could be able to scroll between the content. Adding a list is okay, but how about if you want to get this functionality on just a row or a column? Like for example, here you could see this. Well, I cannot scroll between this. That's all because we haven't specified anything related to scroll. So to make this row scrollable, we could add horizontal scroll to the modifier. In case of column, you could use vertical scroll. If you see this vertical scroll or horizontal scroll, it also asks for the state. This one is the mandatory parameter. So you could give remember scrolling state. That's it. Now just by adding horizontal scroll, we made this row scrollable. That means if this composable text is going beyond the screen, then user will be able to scroll through it so as to see the content. Like for example, let's see this. Now I could be able to scroll and see the content. So just this single attribute is sufficient to make the content scrollable. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about the observer pattern. If you have liked this video, then please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you'll get the videos on the latest topics of Android, Kotlin and Firebase. Also, the next tutorial for Jetpack Compose Zero to Hero Crash Course. Thank you. Stay tuned.